All right. Hey, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and there is chaos in the Middle East. We're going to talk about it coming up next. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Uh, welcome. First, uh, new people, new subscribers. I've had a lot lately, and I'm really thankful for you guys uh, jumping on board. If you leave a comment, I'm probably going to respond um, and interact with you. I love that. Um, kind of, it's my only social media. I'm on Facebook, kind of. I dropped Twitter a long time ago. I think there's an account floating around with me, and um, I'm on Gab too. I'm probably going to be using that a little bit more. So, but really, YouTube is my only social media, and I might use it a little too much, but we'll see. But if you interact with me, I'd love to um, love to talk, to hear your thoughts, and so on. And basically, just the idea of being against the world for the sake of the world, because the world has all sorts of ideas and theology and beliefs, and a lot of times it even says it's Christian or it's biblical, but we have to look at the lens of Scripture and what that really actually looks like. Um, for, for that to actually be the case. So we're going to be looking at some things in the Middle East. Afghanistan, you've probably seen this. Um, today's Tuesday. There have been multiple issues already over the last 48 hours. Uh, basically, the president there, or was the president in Afghanistan, left. Uh, Ghani, I believe is his name, and basically just abdicated, just say. I don't want to have bloodshed. There's 10 or so provinces there in Afghanistan. And basically the West is leaving and the Taliban is, is coming in. Now, there's many people on different sides of the spectrum. Everybody says it's a, it's a disaster. Everyone. Um, Joe Biden has already proved himself. I mean, anybody who has eyes could know that he was not going to be a good president. Very, very weak president. Uh, there's many other presidents in the past that we could compare him to. Uh, and the terrorists know this. We see this at the border. I've got a friend who works on the border. Uh, he actually does aerial stuff, so he's not quite on on the border. Um, but he's in that one of the agencies, and it's just it's horrendous. I mean, July was the busiest month he's seen. They said in 21 years. He actually sent me an article. Uh, if I think about it, I'll put it in the comments or the below the description. Got some coffee today. Drop a comment. Tell me what kind of coffee you think I'm drinking. Um, but seriously, though, both with our border, the southern border, and just letting people, droves and droves, come across. Um, and then, of course, now Afghanistan, the Middle East. And it's not just Biden. I don't, I don't want to just beat up on Biden. Uh, I don't agree probably with almost anything he says, just in general, as far as policy. Um, I don't know if he fully understands that he's even president sometimes, it seems. And it just is his cognition but other times he's very clear and very cogent so I don't I don't really know um, but you know Trump was there for f four years Obama eight years Bush eight years and some who are maybe younger uh, than me or maybe not just well what's going on again what not a huge history lesson but of course September 11th 9/11 right September 11th 2001 almost 20 years ago the US was attacked. And we'll just go with the standard narrative because there's all sorts of conspiracy theories and I have my own beliefs about it. Um, but 3,000 people died at the World Trade Center. Two planes, right, smashed into it, blew it up, destroyed it, whatever you want to look at. And then the Pentagon and then there was a fourth plane in Pennsylvania that went down, right? Those, that's the standard and thousands of people died. And it was just a, it was an attack on American soil. Plain and simple. We all know that. <laughs> Who did it? You know, that's still up for debate uh, among some circles. But regardless, Afghanistan was supposedly responsible. And and uh, the Taliban. Now, different than ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Boko Haram or some of all these other terrorist organizations that are in Africa and South, uh, South uh, or the Middle East and those types of places. And we're going to get to the theology in a moment. But the point is that Afghanistan uh, is the one, at least those are the people who harbored the terrorists and trained them and so on. And so we went there. But, of course, we went to Iraq and Afghanistan. It's just a whole big mess, right? And, of course, George Bush, George W. Bush was the one who started it. And, you know, he had his reasons. I would disagree with most of them as well. Um, because in one sense, we're not the world's police, right? We have resources, we have freedom, we have liberty. And thus, if someone wants help, hey, let's, let's, I'm preaching through the Ten Commandments right now in uh, 
church on service on Sunday mornings. Uh, if you want, you can check out the website. It's newharvestbaptist.org, newharvestbaptist.org. That's the actual church I pastor. Um, we just did the second commandment. I'm going to be doing the third commandment. And what that's called is a suzerain vassal treaty. It's a suzerain is the sovereign king and a vassal is the weaker, smaller king. And this was goes way back to the Babylonians, the Hittites, and all the others where a sovereign, a ruler over an area would have other kings and they would basically build allegiances and alliances. Well, suzerain vassal, it's kind of funny. It's not in the Bible, but that's what it is. It's a treaty. Um, we see this all the way back in Genesis with Adam and Eve and God being the suzerain and Adam and Eve being the vassals to be co-regents and, and, and co-rulers um, with God. Now, again, this video isn't about that. It's not about suzerain vassal or anything else, but the point is, America has been the suzerain for a lot for the last, since especially after World War II. We protect, right? We have bases and, you know, there's some people who say we absolutely need that. Some people who say we absolutely shouldn't do that. Um, and there's all sorts of other reasons, I'm sure, that the public's not being told of why we go in and do what we do. Anyway, Afghanistan, it, it is a highly, mostly Muslim country. And they're very poor. They were poor. We went in in 2001. Uh, 2003, right around there. It wasn't like right after 9-11, but, but further than that, we can see that it's just been f a failure after failure after failure. And it's now been 20 years, basically, since we've been in Afghanistan or, you know, roughly. And yet we see now, you've probably seen a lot of these footage. It's not going to be super comprehensive, but we're going to look at a few videos and the responses and, and how we deal with this and how we should push against this as Christians and understand it, and then how we can then give an answer for the hope that is in us. So we're going to look at uh, first the Afghan people on this plane at the airport at Kabul. So it's Kabul or Kabul. Um, and there are people, basically the situation is the U.S. and others are going in and pulling people out. They're not stopping the Taliban. Now keep in mind, you'll hear security forces, you'll hear... Um, Military. Sometimes you'll hear military. Military. Usually you'll, you'll hear uh, other words, not military, but it's like the the Afghani security forces. That's talking about their army. I don't know why they don't use the word. It's kind of weird and super PC, I guess. I don't really know. And there's a U.S. embassy there and everything else. Well, the U.S. embassy closes on Sunday night. They lower the flag. They take off the thing, and they're out. They're done. Many people are comparing this to Saigon, the fall of Saigon in Vietnam, which is in the in in uh, what 45 years ago or so. And in the mid 60s, and I guess it was 70s. I think it's just worse. And I'm not a war historian by any means, but based on what I know, what I've seen, it's worse. So let's just look at this plane and the people. It should give us pause. It really should give us pause. First, first and foremost, I, I, I am, I'm heartbroken for this desperation. You see this desperation. You see people clinging to this massive, whatever plane it is, C, whatever number, huge, huge cargo plane. And I'll put up a picture uh, and, and it'll show one of the planes. I don't know if it's the exact one we saw in video or not, but it's packed in with Afghani refugees. How they decided certain people were getting out, certain people weren't, I don't know. But you have to remember, there's the Taliban, right? These are the, these are the insurgents. These are basically the same type of people as BLM and Antifa here to a degree. They're terrorists. And they're here, terrorists, especially Antifa. Um, Antifa has no good cause but chaos. I'm sure there's BLM people that, oh, I'm here for the cause. Fine. But a lot of BLM antics are also terrorist acts. But anyway, uh, that's basically them. And then the normal people, us, you and me who live in Ohio and Texas and, and Kentucky and uh, Maine, California, wherever you live, drop a comment below. Just tell me where you live, by the way, your state. I'm, I'm curious. Those are the Afghanis and those are the refugees. And there's also diplomats and other people that are just in Afghanistan, right? Well, we're just leaving. Everything's leaving. And this is Joe Biden saying, we're out, we're out. 20 years, we've been a success. Now he's standing behind this and, and we'll see some video. Uh, and there's plenty of others I'm sure that you've seen as well that are already out saying, no, it's fine. No mistake. This is great. 
this is worse than Saigon. This is worse than Vietnam. And the fact of the matter is these people are desperate. These Afghani people are desperate. Why? Because they knew what it was like 20 years ago and more under the Taliban rule. Now, you have to remember the Taliban, and we'll get more into theology in a moment. The Taliban is running, not, they're not just backward, right? They're not just backwater, and you'll see this complete allergy and, and aversion in the mainstream media. And this is what I want us to pick up on, is no one talks about Islam. Nobody. But Islam has a very specific eschatology, a very specific worldview, and it's ultimately conquer. That's what it is. It's not spread the gospel of Christ, that new that dead people can become alive, that new life comes, that you can be forgiven of your sin. That's Christ. That, that it goes to anyone, the most wealthy person, the most poor person, male and female, bond and free. All can be one in Christ. That is not Islam. It is not the same God. We do not worship the same God. Don't, Islam would not say that, and Christianity should not say that either, though there's many Christians who pretend that that's what we do, and it's just misunderstanding. Um, Islam is, is a Unitarian religion. It is one God. It's Allah, and that's it. There is, and he has a prophet. However, they, they always kind of have a little slogan they say. And they believe in Jesus, that Jesus was a prophet, but that's all. They don't believe that he's son of God the son of God. They don't believe that God has a spirit. And thus there's no commune, communing with humanity. It's, it's God only, Allah only has mercy. That's just God in uh, Arabic. He's only merciful. He can only have mercy. He cannot have grace. Grace, remember, is unearned favor, right? It's just a massive, you get, you know, a house and free college and, and, a, and a great job, right? And, and everything paid for for the rest of your life. That's grace. Uh, you don't deserve it. Mercy is not getting what you do deserve. And that's also God, Yahweh. Um, but the God of uh, Islam is, 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 can be a merciful God. Doesn't mean he is always a merciful God uh, because he can decide he's capricious and he will decide whether you will go into paradise or not. Um, and so there's no assurance. There's just, that's why you see this war. And the only assurance actually is ultimately dying in um, holy war, which is, which is jihad. And that's, that's fighting against that. It's not just their backward or their backwater or their backwoods or, you know, back, back, back to the future. Um, <laughs> they have a specific worldview. That's why they do what they do. That's why Al-Qaeda, not, not the Taliban, that's why they do what they do. That's why ISIS or ISIL does what they do. That's why Boko Haram does what they do and so on. Biden says here, what we saw even just last month was Joe Biden confident that they weren't going to lose the country to the Taliban. The likelihood there's going to be the Taliban overrunning everything and owning the whole country is highly unlikely. Just 39 days ago, he made this vow to the American people. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. The Afghan president, Ashraf Ghani, evacuated himself overnight. He's reportedly now in Uzbekistan, according to Al Jazeera, but he posted a statement to Facebook saying the Taliban had made it clear that they were ready to carry out a bloody attack on all of Kabul and the people of Kabul, Sharif, to oust me. In order to prevent a flood of bloodshed, I decided to leave. Now, a spokesperson for the Taliban has been speaking to some different media outlets. They've said that they do intend to have a peaceful transfer of power, which is very much what we're seeing now, but also warned against any uh, assumptions that they would return to a kind of government we saw pre uh, the original invasion. But of course, that would be little comfort to the millions of people in Afghanistan and the surrounding countries waiting to see what this new regime will bring to them. So right there, I mean, the streets are packed. So the, the airport is swimming with people, chaos. It's an ocean of people, desperate, desperate people clinging to an airplane that then people fell. Mind you, I don't know if you've seen this. People were falling from the plane to their death because of their desperation. Because they don't want to be under the Taliban rule. And the Taliban rule is, is taken from the Quran. Now, there are certain people, well, that's, not, that's more liberal, that's more uh, um, conservative or extremist. Well, I would argue that they're being consistent. 
They're taking the Quran for what it says, for what Muhammad did. It's not a matter of just wishy-washy religion. Many others, and I will drop it in uh, the comments. I always say comments. It's not comments. It's the description. Whatever. Maybe I'll put it in the comments. I guess I can put stuff in the comments too, right? Uh, David Wood has been on YouTube for a long, long time. He's called Axe Apologetics, X 17 Apologetics, and he deals with Islam. And he's, he's a little bit more rough around the edges, uh, but he's very good. And he, he accurately will portray and um, tell it like it is with Islam. The likelihood, based on what? Based on what? And now, now what do you say? Oh, yeah, I was wrong. Did he say that I was wrong? Did Biden say, shoot, I messed up? This is a tragedy. This is chaotic. This is astounding. This is horrible. This is a human rights crisis. No. No. Biden is a joke. He's a complete joke. And honestly, if Trump was doing the same thing and acting the same way, I would call him a joke. What did Trump do for Afghanistan? I don't even know. Right? But this is what we're dealing with now. He didn't get us out, right? And he didn't do it well, where you're giving Afghani forces, the army or the security people, quote unquote, to do anything. They didn't even fight the Taliban. And there's a video of the Taliban, the, the leader, who has a f Twitter page, by the way, speaking of President Trump and the Taliban. Remember, President Trump got banned from all social media as a sitting president. I mean, this is how much the left hated Trump. And yet, Al-Qaeda, excuse me, uh, the Taliban, the Taliban, now what? <laughs> they still have an official Twitter page. That they've actually, forget January 6th for a moment, which, yes, that was stupid and whatever, and there was probably a mix of people. It wasn't just, you know, MAGA supporters. Um, but regardless, even if it was, did they actually take over? Did they act, was this an actual insurrection? No, not even close. In Afghanistan, this is an actual insurrection. You can see it. We can see the video of the guys, all bearded, I'll watch you here in a minute, taking over the presidential palace with no bloodshed. Right? Thankfully, and that's what we can praise God for, we can be thankful that there was very little bloodshed compared to what there could have been. But the U.S. didn't do anything. We're out. We're done. You know, U.K., Australia, whoever else, the West. Also, the Afghani security forces didn't do anything. The Afghani army, no resistance. The fall of Afghanistan is not just a political or security defeat for the West. It's also a cultural defeat. For a start, check the Taliban men, all men, by the way, uh, who took over the presidential palace in Kabul. I don't think there's a single face mask there between them with this virus raging in Afghanistan too. Well, not that I recommend what they're doing, of course. I'm just pointing out that these men are not obsessing about some small threat to their health. They're looking at a bigger picture. But for me, the difference really is best summed up in a couple of videos I'll show you. First, here's the top general in the United States, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, three weeks ago, only three weeks ago, dismissing the possibility of exactly what happened just yesterday. The Afghan security forces have the capacity to sufficiently fight and defend their country. A negative outcome, a Taliban automatic military takeover, is not a foregone conclusion. Well, thanks, Milley, the highest rank military guy in the United States. So Biden says that a month ago. This guy says it three weeks ago. Again, in case, in case you're not fully seeing or understanding, the president and his... Joint Chiefs of Staff, the, the leader of that, all the armed forces, right? All the heads of the Navy and the Army, the Marine Corps and everything. They're all gathered together. What should we do? What should we do? This isn't new. We've been to war before. This isn't new. What should we do? Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, this definitely is not going to happen. Don't worry. Mm -mm. Yeah. The Afghani security forces, not the Army, uh, they, they have everything they need to defend. Okay. Maybe that's true. And maybe we should take them up and believe their word. Except for now, of course, that's not true, right? Because Kabul fell in hours. Hours. And what's to stop the Taliban? What's to stop them from 
being invigorated and doing this elsewhere. Or Al-Qaeda or ISIS or whatever. Supposedly ISIS is defeated. I know. Okay. Um, or they weren't. <laughs> Who knows? What's to stop these terrorists from doing something like this again somewhere else? There isn't. When good people stand by and do nothing or say nothing, evil prevails. However the phrase goes. You know the phrase probably. When you just stand there and don't do anything, you don't say, hey, I'm not going to call this man a woman. I'm not going to stand for the abortion of unborn. I'm not going to stand for you to tell me or my church how to live, how to worship, and so on. You need to, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not teaching my children this, and so on and so forth. If, if you don't stand up for basic liberty and basic beliefs, that's what conviction comes in. Not just beliefs, but convictional. I'm willing to die on this hill. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching this. If you're still with me, make sure your convictions are firm. Especially if you're a follower of Christ, make sure they're firm. Don't just have some nebulous, Jesus loves me, great, I'm saved, and I go to church, and so on. Make sure what you figure out what you're going to die for, what you're willing to be sacrificed for, what you're willing to go to jail for, be lo lose your job for, and so on, are that. I'm not trying to be dire. I'm not trying to be um, doom and gloom. Christ has already won, okay? So then act like he won. Right? We can preach the gospel confidently, confidently that people can come to the knowledge of Christ. That despite this world and all the sorrows and all the pain and all the death that can and does come, Jesus has overcome the world. And use that as your marching order. Knowing, even in Ephesians 6, the end of Ephesians 6, that we don't wrestle against, against flesh and blood, but against rulers and principalities and powers in the heavenly places. That we must put on the full armor of God. Not, not some of it or pick up the sword only or the helmet only or the shield and just defend and defend it. No, we must be go on, go, on, go on the offensive as well. And meanwhile, let's look again at the ragtag army that defeated the United States. Do any of them look bothered by their lack of diversity, bothered about their gender, wondering if they might be bi or non-binary, filled with shame at their maleness? And their color. So he has a good point there, right? Islam is a male-dominated religion. Um, and we'll look at another video in a moment. Uh, looking at that and understanding that. And, and the West, again, the secular West, who doesn't believe in God, who doesn't believe in any sort of supernatural, doesn't understand this. Now, men and women were created by God equally. And men have certain roles and women have certain roles. That's evident from creation. That's evident from history. Now, are there abuses? Yes. Are there abuses even in the church, so-called? Yes, absolutely. But that doesn't change the fact that all are one in Christ. That doesn't change the fact that, you know, men are elders and pastors in the church to lead the local church, to lead families and so on. And women are called to submit unto that as unto the Lord, not because your husband's so great or because he's such a turd. And he's not great, and he's lazy and stupid, and I got to step up. No, what does the scripture say? Being one without a word by the conduct of his of their wives. It's talking about husbands. There's so many other passages, but men, keep in mind, ladies, that men are talked about more than women in the scripture, right? Live with your wife in an understanding way so that your prayers will not be weak, uh, hindered. As the weaker vessel, yes, you know, we can see this with the Olympics, right? Men can do more pull-ups. That's really all that's saying. Not mentally weaker or something else, I don't believe. But physically. But there's so many other things that women do that men cannot do. My wife stays with my children most of the day. <laughs> and I love my children. And usually it's fine. But to constantly balance and constantly shift and also then have this kind of thread of mothering going throughout the day. And, you know, she would tell you that she doesn't do it perfectly. Nobody does, so don't believe the lie that, oh, they, they've got it all together. We don't, and neither do you. <laughs> but God has made women in such a way to handle the household, to handle uh, uh, children, to handle and work far better than men. I know families have tried to switch it, and, you know, if, if you can do that, I guess. You know, I wouldn't say there's a complete hard, hard and fast, you're sinning if you do this sort of thing, but there is clear evidence from Scripture and from just history in general that and just practical nature, right? Pragmatism that 
this is how this works. It's far better. That being said, Islam is highly oppressive to women. Of course, you've got the coverings because of the sexual this and, and men seeing. And Notice feminists never really go after Islam, not, not in any really tangible way, right? They, they might complain here and there, but it's very, very nominal. But now we have people trying to escape the Taliban rule that's, that is looming on Kabul, that is about to be established. Now, of course, they said, the Taliban, that they're going to have a peaceful a transition of power and we're going to have other parties and this and this and this. You took over the country with guns, with weapons, with violence. Now, thankfully, very few people were injured or killed, thankfully. But you saw the tens of thousands of people wanting to leave, desperate to leave. Again, there's videos on there where people are falling from these planes because they've hide, tried to stow away because they're so desperate to get out of Afghanistan. They don't want to be under Islamic rule in that way. Now, many people in the West would say, well, that's just that form of Islam. Sure, I understand that. But if you want, go check out David Wood. And he has far more words on that and what pure Islamic law looks like and Sharia law looks like. Because ultimately the goal of Sharia law is to bring everything under the subjection of it. Subject the whole world. That's why they conquer. That's why they can reconcile and justify the murder of people. And it's either get murdered or convert. Or at minimum, you're going to pay the tax. And this is just reality. Maybe you didn't know this. Maybe you've never heard this before, but it's the reality of it. Now, there's plenty of other people who are inconsistent uh, with their teachings, but that's what the Quran and these other books teach. It is. I mean, again, not, not right in the mail, just delivering it. And so the fact of the matter is, it is highly oppressive in general, but even highly more oppressive to women. In fact, we're going to look at another video right now security reasons our hotel is under lockdown at the moment that's why i'm speaking to you from my room the situation outside is very volatile i've right? covered many wars and revolutions and crises uh, around the world and i've never seen anything like what i'm seeing here or what i'm having to deal with here as a professional abc's ian cannell described the eerie scene in kabul well we've just been out onto the streets the most striking thing out there is we didn't see one single woman. Half the population is now hiding behind closed doors. There's deep fear. You know, the Taliban have had an assassination campaign against professional women, women in particular, who have a very strong presence. Signage at this beauty salon in downtown Kabul is being whitewashed over. You have to. This 12-year-old girl was in tears as she told the world, no one cares about us. And here they are, the new rulers of Afghanistan, taking over the presidential palace. A humiliating end to 20 years of American leadership in a faraway land. All right. No one, no one cares about us, that 12-year-old girl. My oldest is 11, my oldest daughter. And this is, this is the history of humanity, by and large, right? And this is why some people... I think rightfully so, say so smash the patriarchy, you know, Christian patriarchy, this, um, anybody can marry anybody, women, the future is female, blah, 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 blah. Now they have reason for it. Now is their reason, uh, is their actions justified? No, because men and women need each other. Children need fathers and mothers, mothers and fathers. Now it is a fallen world. And the world is insanely broken as it's evidence. But that's why Jesus came. That's why Jesus came into the world to save sinners, into the cosmos, into this creation. He didn't just dictate from afar. He didn't just do something else. That's what Islam is, right? Just Muhammad going into a cave and getting certain uh, visions and certain things and writing it down. He was already hesitant when he first did it. His older wife, uh, he had multiple wives, dozens and dozens, I think hundreds of wives, all the way down to the age six. Uh, but he was mar married to an older woman at the time and she encouraged him, oh, you got to do this. It's very, very reminiscent of Joseph Smith uh, in the 19th century with Mormonism. Um, I think a real spiritual presence actually showed up to both Joseph Smith and Muhammad, uh, both. And therefore, you know, we could talk more about that, but it's, um, those, those are the realities of it. 
and they're very, very grievous. They're sinful. Um, and ultimately, it's, it's very problematic. Now in Afghanistan, now we have the Taliban, you know, ruling, or they're going to start to rule, or however that's going to work, because of us not supporting the Afghani troops, why they didn't um, stay. The president fled to avoid bloodshed. Okay, I, I guess I understand that. One, one headline I saw said he left with cars of cash, uh, although then somebody else said he flew in a helicopter, so who even knows. But he's not there, right? And, you know, that was like Saturday or Sunday morning that he did made a video, and then by Sunday night, they were taking this over. Again, I'm making this video on Tuesday, uh, August 17th. And it's, it's devastating. It's terrible. It's horrible. It's, you know, on the surface, human rights, problems, violations, and issues, and violence, and chaos. But more than that, it's, it's theological, as anything really is. And for the left to constantly talk about anything but theology and anything but Islam, because as soon as you say that, it's like, oh, you're an, Islam you're an Islamic uh, fearmonger, Islamophobe, uh, you're a hateful bigot, you're this, you're this, you're this. But why were all those people wanting to run from the Taliban? Desperate people, more happy and more willing to take their chances on a jet a massive jet that's going to go up thousands and thousands of feet in the air where you're not, you're not going to be able to breathe. And even if you're able to get up and over or something, you're what, two, three, four, five hundred 500 feet up in the air? 1,000 feet up in the air before you realize, oh, I'm running out of oxygen, I'm going to drop off? You're going, even if you're 50 feet in the air, I mean, go jump off a building at 50 feet and see how you do. And this plane is going hundreds of miles an hour, at least 150, 200 miles an hour, right? Like, nothing's, but... but the logic of that situation is so dire that these men, it seemed like there was only men there at the airport and many other places because, well, even when we saw this last video, women aren't out because they're terrified. And rightfully so, because Islam does not care for women the same way uh, as biblical Christianity does and does not see women created in the image of God. They aren't even full citizens a lot of times. And it's, it's heartbreaking. But let us, let us pray for these people and pray for Afghanistan knowing that people are being oppressed and will be oppressed. They saw this 20 years ago with the Taliban rule then. They didn't want it. Of course, we went in and Bush eight years, Obama eight years, Trump four years, Biden eight months, and here we are again. Here we are again, but it's just probably worse now because now the West has been humiliated and more than that, there have been many lives lost. Many soldiers dead because of what? I mean, it's, 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 it's like you, we went and built a big building, right? And, and people died building this big building. And then all of a sudden, right at the end, when we're going to open the building, we demolish it and say, oh, you know, sorry. I stand behind my decision, Biden says, and whatever Trump and Obama and other, peoples have, other people have said, Bush as well. However, they justified their craziness in being there. I, I could keep going. Please pray for Afghanistan. Please pray for those who are there. Please pray that the gospel will go forth, that any Christian who might still be there, that a revival of authentic biblical worship will be there that the Taliban will quickly fall, and that there will be understanding that Christ is triumphant. Christ will rule, even in Afghanistan. Islam will not win, though they think they have, and they think in the short term they will. But make no mistake, Christ has won, and thus we must act in such a way. We must be against the world and its ideas, its beliefs, and that includes Islam. But for the sake of the world, not against the people, but against principalities and powers, right? And further, every lofty philosophy that is raised up against the knowledge of Christ. Not against the people. Love the people, right? Because what does the scripture say? They're enslaved. They're in bondage. Whether they're an atheist, whether they're a Scientologist, whether they're a Mormon, whether they're a Muslim, they're in bondage to a works-based system that will not set them free. That Christ is the one who delivers He is the one who delivers from sin and death. 
It is not your works. There's nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross I cling, as the old hymn says. We are not justified by the works of the law, but by hearing with faith. Colossians, very good. Galatians is excellent as well in these areas. In understanding the law of God, that it is point, the whole point is to point us to Christ, to show us that we are murderous, theft, idolater, idol, idol worshipers. We cannot come to God on our own. We must have the substitutionary atonement of Christ. I hope this finds you well. Please comment, like, share, subscribe, and... Um, yeah, until next time, be against the world for the sake of the world. Take care.